The gospel uses the word believe five different times. Everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. So that everyone who believes in him might not perish. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned. Whoever does not believe has already been condemned because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. Now, there can be a tendency to take that particular phraseology and say, therefore, anybody who says, I believe in Jesus, because that's what the gospel says, is therefore automatically saved, that that person will inherit the kingdom of God. And it is only those who do not believe who are subject to judgment and possible loss of the kingdom of heaven. But by that standard, moral life makes no difference. By that standard, what the world does, whether you live rightly or fail to live rightly, makes no difference. All that matters is that I affirm I believe in Jesus. I believe in Jesus, and so I'm going to play golf on Sunday instead of going to church. I believe in Jesus so I can do what I want, when I want, how I want, because I believe in Jesus. I believe in Jesus, and I'm going to enter into this illicit relationship, and it's okay because I believe in Jesus. This is the interpretation of many in the world about what it means to believe in Jesus, that it has no connection with the other teachings of the gospel, has no connection with the commandments has no connection with right reason. And yet, later on in that same gospel, we have this wake-up phrase, but whoever lives the truth, not believes the truth, lives it. And that really is a part of believe is to translate into concrete actions those things which I claim to hold dear. And so we cannot say on one hand, I value and respect the dignity of human life, but abortion is okay. I value and hold dear the life even of the elderly, but assisted suicide and physician-assisted suicide is okay. That's not living the truth. That's living the lie that the world sells us. Living the truth means believing in Jesus and all that he taught and rejecting those things of the world which are not in conformity with the way and words of Jesus. And we could find hundreds of moral dilemmas in our culture and in our society which militate against the teachings of Jesus. And many Catholics who hold those contrary positions. For ourselves, we must take advantage of this Lent to strive to know the truth more fully and completely, and then challenge ourselves to put that truth into living practice in the day-to-day -day efforts of our lives. And there are many elements of the gospel which touch our lives and challenge us. The Lord is wise. He knows that though the light comes into the world, there are many who embrace darkness and prefer the darkness and do not want to come into the light. They do not want the light of the gospel to shine on their acts, their attitudes, their beliefs, or their values. They prefer the darkness and will curse the light. How often the church is cursed and condemned for her proclamation of the truth.
how many of the teachings of the church are ridiculed in our society as somehow being out of step with our secular culture. Yes, they are out of step with our secular culture because our secular culture is out of step with God. And we must not allow ourselves to be deceived by that culture, to be deceived by the apparent attractiveness of that culture, because it is a culture of lies, and it is not the truth. It is not the truth about life or about humanity or about human nature. It proclaims a lie and tries to force even the Catholic Church to be silent about the lie and even to proclaim and provide for that lie in our Catholic institutions. This is the goal of the world, to have their darkness be accepted as if it was light. During Lent, we prepare for Easter, but in a particular way, we repair, prepare for a renewal of our own baptism. And the baptismal promises are tremendously important. They're a part of the Easter Vigil and our Easter Sunday Masses, but the first of them, and we have to weigh this and consider this, so that when the question is asked, we know the meaning of the answer. Do you renounce Satan and all his works, and all his empty promises. The empty promises of Satan are none other than the empty promises of the world. And these we are called to reject and renounce. We are called to accept the truth and not only to believe in Jesus, but especially to live the beauty of the truths of the Catholic Church. Live the truth during these days of Lent in preparation for a complete and wholesome rejection of Satan at Easter. <laughs>